Hi guys, Johnny here with Land Lives Racing. Uh, we are making a little video to help clear the air a bit about CFT testing. Uh, CFT testing is a computer service. Uh, it is basically to prove that the wing is working and how the wing works and basically all the different aspects about it. Uh, so we're going to dive in, basically go over uh, how to read this, uh, the CFD charts and to how to apply it to your car. So let's dive right into it. Uh, so first things first, we're going to go over to the CFD testing page uh, right here. We're on the Nine Lives Racing page. Uh, so you're going to click right up here on CFD testing. And basically, you know, there's a video of us right here, uh, the charts, some squiggly lines. What does this all mean? So first off, uh, first things first, we're going to go right to uh, let's do this guy. So this is downforce versus velocity. And the first subject I want to touch on is this, is AOA, right? Angle of attack. Uh, what is AOA? Easy. So you got your wing right here, right? You see it down in the little corner. Put your pull back to my hat. And the, the AOA is this angle, right? Now we measure our AOA a little bit differently. Uh, we measure it including the wicker bill. A lot of other companies don't do that. Um, we do this so that way you have a frame of reference when you get to the track. Uh, you don't need any special tools. You don't need any special tools that's there, you know, sits there, or anything like that. Just go get yourself an angle finder, slap it on top of the wing. You got your AOA, record it. Uh, just makes life a lot easier if you're going to be at the track. So AOA is like this. Uh, so that would be like zero, and then down a little be five, and then down more be ten. Um, of course, forty-five. Don't drive like this on the street. Just I see it all the time. It's the most frustrating, makes me want to murder. Don't do it. No. Uh, and so, all right. so what we're looking at is, of course, uh, AOA. Now, AOA leads me on to my next thing that we need to look at, and that is lift to drag. Uh, lift to drag is very critical. It's very important. It makes a wing good or bad, right? Because frankly, you can use a piece of wood, put it like that, and that's going to make downforce. That's, that's literally what splitters are. It's just like the piece of wood or a piece of hard plastic, whatever, whatever have you, it's going to make downforce. Problem with that is it's going to make a lot of drag. It's going to really slow you down, and it's going to slow you down the faster that you go. So what we're going to be looking at is uh, what makes a wing good or what makes it better than just a piece of wood you know, wood, let's say. Um, so that's lift to drag ratio. So the, what we're going to look at here is on this chart, you see we have a, a LDR, that's lift to drag ratio. And that's going to give you the, the ratios of all the wings at different speeds at different angles. Uh, our best number we have is 15.2 to 1. So that means 15.2 pounds of downforce per pound of drag, uh, which is honestly one of the best in the industry. Don't even have to look around. It is really good. Um, so uh, we're going to, so that's the lip to drag ratio. That's what makes it good. Uh, so let's dive right into um, the, uh, this drag. I want downforce. Boom. So first problem, our first misconception that we get, of course, is looking at this chart. Everyone thinks it's a dyno graph, right? So and what makes a dyno graph good? A big number. Because, uh, I mean, who doesn't love a thousand horsepower? Uh, this is a little bit different. So this is a, uh, on wings, it, the big number doesn't really matter. Uh, so just kind of forget about that because we could run this thing up to 170 miles an hour and get 500 pounds of downforce on this thing. We could run up to 300 or some kind of obnoxious, insane number that no one's ever going to get to. And we'd have, you know, a thousand pounds of downforce, right? Because downforce is, you know, this is all scalable. What instead I want you to do is think about your lap. Right? Think about it. Put it in your mind. What's your average speed? That's where you're going to be looking on this, right? So on an average, uh, we go to road land a lot. Our average speed is roughly 100 miles an hour, maybe close to 80. Um, and so that's right about here. Now on our car, it's Miata with the uh, basic splitter, right? So it's a three inch splitter, six out the front. Bottom of it goes all the way back to the front axle. It's textbook, what everybody does. And we found with our wing uh, at 66 inches, which this graph here is for a 70 inch wing, uh, but our wing at 66 inches was bringing a balance to the car at 
one degree AOA. So let's just say we had a 70. So on this one, we're looking at about 125 pounds of downforce. And that brought the car uh, even and able to control. So that's what you're looking at. Um, now, if you have an autocross car, you're going to be going much slower speed. You're looking down here, um, you know, so you're anywhere between 50 and 100 uh, or 50 and 75, say, pounds of downforce on the back of that car. So that's just kind of what we're looking at. That's how you read the downforce. Uh, now, where the wing gets really good is here in the drag. This is where we really start looking at it. And this is where this chart really kind of shows. I want the big chart. Um, so it's right here. So as you can see, the drag, as you increase the AOA, the drag increases, right? And drag is what slows you down. That's what's bad on the back straight, what's going to kill your top speed. That's what's going to kill uh, your stopwatch times. Uh, so the more of this you have, the slower you're going to go. <clears throat> now, over here, you can see the downforce is going up and you see these two lines right here between the five and the 10 and there aren't diverging very much. This is telling you that the wing stalls in between these two degrees, right? So what's wing stall? Uh, wing stall, when wing stalls is when the air fails to stay attached to the back of the wing, right? So it's gonna come up around the bottom of the wing and then kick off back here. And then the back of this wing is gonna have some swirls. That swirl is drag. Um, the wing's going to keep making downforce. It's going to keep making low pressure, but it's going to start making more and more drag. And so when you look at a chart like this, you go, okay, where is it starting to stall at? And on our wing, we found that without a gurney flap, it stalls around eight degrees. Um, so we're sitting right about here. You know, see, it's making more drag, but it's not making more downforce. The wing is starting to stall. Uh, of course, there's ways to fix this. Uh, if you want to go more than eight degrees of AOA, uh, you can add a second uh, element to it. We could add a gurney flap. Uh, we could add vortex generators to the bottom of the wing. Really, there's a lot we can do. Uh, but so far in all of our testing and all of our customer reports, everyone's been happy right around the one to two degree AOA mark. Um, it's been really hard to get out, get away from that. Uh, and of course, if you're going to add a big crazy front splitter, then we need to start adding more AOA, all that fun stuff. So I just wanted to make a real quick video, cover a lot of stuff, cover how to read these charts, and uh, hopefully you guys can have a good time with it. See you soon.